Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Joshua Suliruka here, your host of the Impact Podcast Show. And firstly, I just want to say thank you to everyone that is listening on here, uh, whether it's through Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I want to say thank you for tuning in and also thank you for taking out the time. But I also want to thank those that are watching this podcast through our YouTube channel. You know, make sure you guys like this video if you have received um, some value. Comment your thoughts, any thoughts that you have um, during this uh, episode. And make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, make sure you guys click on that bell button for the latest updates to our next video. And so that's the first thing I want to share. But the second thing I want to share before I introduce our next special guest on the Impact Podcast Show, I'd like to state our mission. And our mission is simple. Our mission is to focus on impacting the one. So if you are impacted by this podcast, I encourage you to share share this uh, podcast, whether you're on YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, to anyone else that can uh, resonate with this. You know, just remember, it, can only, uh, it will only take one person to change someone's life and that can possibly be you and that would be cool but guys we're going to get straight into it um i don't want to beat around the bush i want to get straight into this uh this podcast and so our next special guest on the impact podcast show i just want to give you guys a bit of a, a story um i actually interviewed um uh, lino yeah lino yeah um yeah. i ended up interviewing lino and um you know he spoke uh, a bit about this man on the other side um, not not on the podcast much, but before um, he spoke about him. And so I was grateful and I was like, yeah, I have this guy on my mind. I'm keen to get him on. But I just want to share to you guys a bit about him. Uh, the one thing that really sparked me to actually want to have a conversation with him is is that um, there's this relatability. You know, we're actually on a similar journey. Um, he actually left his construction job to pursue a new journey to content creating. And uh, I ended up doing that myself, not in the construction um, job business, but like in terms of leaving the job, I end up leaving the job to pursue a similar role to him. Uh, another thing that we have um, that in common is that he actually runs his own podcast show called If You Don't Know, Now You Know, which is a nice hook, that's for sure. Uh, he's also a part of the men's medicine, uh, you know, leadership crew, uh, which for me personally, like I'm, uh, I love, I love the connection um, that they are doing and for the men out there. And um, most importantly, I know that he has a great story that will inspire many. It has inspired me hearing just a little bit. And I know that we're going to get deep into that today. But I know that it will inspire everyone out there that is listening to this. So, guys, I would like you all uh, to be welcomed by my man, Luke Hecker. Yo, what is going on, everyone? I appreciate the intro, brother. Thank you so much. I was like, you've nah. done it all there. Um, <laughs> and yeah, thanks very much for having me on the show, brother. appreciate your time as well. No, nah, it's all good, bro. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for taking out the time. Um, you know, I know that you're a busy man and I know that you have stuff to do, um, you know, because obviously we do the similar thing. You know, you do content creating, I do content creating. You do podcasting, I do podcasting. So I know that there's a lot that you have um, on you. And so I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. No, anytime, brother. Yeah, and it's a um, it's nice to be on the other side of the uh, interview yes. as well. It's, um, I've had I was just sitting there for a second. I was like, oh man, it's been a long time since I've had someone interview me and talk to me. Um, and yeah, definitely. Uh, I know we can get some value out there to the listeners today uh, out of my story. I know they'll be able to take something away and um, share that with their journey as well and resonate uh, not only with my journey but uh, ours as well. And you know what we're doing at the moment and what we're currently moving through and how we're how we're changed our lives around. And uh, stepping into something new. Yeah, hundred percent, man, hundred percent, bro. So yeah, man. Uh, I guess the first thing we'll probably get into is, um, you know, uh, you know, th- there may be people out there uh, listening to this that are, you know, under your following, uh, but there may be a lot of, um, you know, uh, the people that are listening uh, as part of the Impact Podcast Show family that may not know much about you. So, bro, could you kind of share a bit about who you are? Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll run you through. I'll start from the beginning. Um, I grew up in a small town in the middle of Queensland uh, called Quilpie. Uh, very uh, yeah, small. It's like 50 people, 50 to 100 people. Very country. Uh, both my mother and father from New Zealand flew over here. I uh, grew up in the Sheeran Sheds, traveling around Australia as a, um, as a young whippersnapper, as I'd say. <laughs> Just yeah, getting yeah. up to all sorts. Didn't really go to a lot of school. I went in and out of a lot of schools just from my childhood. Uh, and then... Uh, I went to boarding school up in Rockhampton. Um, yep. From there, finished there, went to Brisbane, ended up on the Gold Coast. Uh, that's a short story, but we'll dive into the rest later. And from there on, I've been involved in uh, men's medicine. I own a construction business here on the Gold Coast, or I did actually, and I've just kind of phased that out. 
set myself into uh, podcasting, content creating, which for me was something that I I never thought I would do. Uh, having yeah. conversations with people was like one of those things where I was like, man, I couldn't ha- hold a good conversation with people not so long ago. Uh, and it was one of those things I was always scared of. So I ended up playing the opposite game. And then I ended up starting the podcast and doing that. <laughs> but yeah, on on the backside of that, obviously the men's medicine stuff, traveling around Australia and New Zealand, uh, helping men and women in our community uh, get the most out of their life. That's kind of what I, my real passion is at the moment, uh, is yeah, helping people, helping people. And even with podcasting as well and content creating, like we are here today, I uh, know a lot of people get value out of what we talk about and, and where we take the conversation. Yeah, That's bro. Thank you bad. so much, man. Thank you so much for sharing, bro. And like the one mm. thing that I can see shared away from you, man, it's funny, like we actually haven't met in person. Uh, this is actually the first time, yeah. but I don't know. There's some, there's some sort of relatability that we can bring together. And I love that you mentioned that you love, like you love helping people. And I'm guessing, mm. right? Like I'm assuming right now it's due to the fact that you know how it feels to be in their shoes. Is that, is that something that you would say? Yeah, 100%. That's exactly why I got into this game. I actually had this question asked me. This is like a weird question that you've asked this as well because it was last Sunday. I was sitting on the beach um, Sunday, you know, and I talked to everyone. There's an old guy there. He was 60 years old, actually. And I was having a chat to him and he's asking me what I do. And I told him and he's like, oh, why do you? He's like, oh, what made you get into that? What made you help people? And at the time, I actually gave him a logical answer. Like, oh, you know, I... I went through all my things and I've had my ups and downs and I actually had a real convention this week. It's kind of weird that you're, we're talking about it now. Cause I didn't, I, I got in the car and I felt like I lied and I was like, did I just tell him what he wanted to hear? But when I really thought about it, and I made a video about this the other day, uh, I haven't put it out yet, but I actually got into this space because I wanted to be honest with people. Come on. That was it. I, I had to take me, it took me a few days to sit with it. Um, and I actually got into this space and I want to help people because I feel like the one thing that a lot of people are lacking just from my experience in this space is honesty, yes. honest advice, um, not only from other people, but within themselves, being honest here and true yeah. here, that is something that's truly missing. And, uh, I don't ever want to have to put a filter on anything or anything that I tell anyone. And if yeah. I would, I always respect people that are straight with me as much as sometimes it hurts and it may not be the thing that I want to hear. Um, but yeah, that's, me helping people is so important and yeah it's like this is a funny topic because it sat with me it actually threw me off for two days because i got in the car and i was like what did that old guy do to me i was like what did he because <laughs> yeah I, I was like yeah pretty sure on my why i've been through my highs and lows like i have and i i've been quite lonely before and and, and in a very bad state of my life where uh things were never so great i wasn't positive i wasn't this guy that had a good attitude, I had a fucking shit attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I hated everyone. I, I would make fun of people. I would put people down. I was a poor partner. Uh, I was lost. I was a lost puppy. Um, and it was, um, it took me a few years actually to find my feet. But uh, yeah, and that's how I got here today. I, you, know, you got to go through the, through the lows to get the highs, baby. Yeah. Man. No, 100%, yeah, it's, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's been a it's been a bit of a journey, and uh, I'm sure we're going to touch on that as well. So, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent, we will, bro. Hundred percent, we will. Mm. Like the purpose of um, you know, why I wanted to get uh, you know, Luke Hecker to jump on is because you know, just behind every person, there's always a story, and I know that that's something that you believe in. I know that that's something mm. that you're putting into your content and into your podcast. You know, allowing people to get their stories on because obviously. Uh, you know, everyone has this uh, persona or this thought of like this certain person, but it's like, if you knew their story and knew what they like they had went through, um, your paradigm or like your perspective would change. Yeah, definitely. And that's, that's exactly what I like to pitch to people as well, because like me and like you, I've been wrong so many times. Like I've <laughs> seen so many people and I, and I love that now. It used to be a thing where I'd be like, oh shit, I'm wrong. Uh, but now I'm like, you know, I've, I've judged people so many times. It's not like, I like to, but it's just something that we commonly do as human beings. Like yeah. we walk into a room, we obviously check the room, scan the room, and eventually we just make our own judgments on people. And I love being wrong about that because I've met so many people and I'm like, you're a dickhead. And then I've got to know them. I know their story. I'm like, shit, man, sorry, bro. You're actually really good, dude. I'm like, I get to be wrong. 
And uh, yeah, that's that's such an important uh, trait to have out here in today's life and society. Just like been walking around, you never know what someone's story is. And being in podcasting and interviewing people and talking to people has taught me one thing: is compassion. Compassion, yeah. man. It's just like you know, you see it. It's just like okay, cool, man. It's so good. You know, I love you and respect everyone now. It's just it's kind of settled me down in a lot in a lot better way. <laughs> so yeah, I really like it. Hey. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And um, I I love that that you mentioned about podcasting because uh, the the cool thing that we're doing right here, uh, when it comes to uh, social media, we're actually uh, um, we're actually helping people, not hurting people. You know, there's <laughs> there's people out there that are that are putting content that are that are hurting people, um, and not even funny enough, it's not just uh, people; it's also the media. Like I, I know that's something that uh, that you can probably relate to, but you know, the media is one thing I've learned lately is that the media is just pulling out fear, you know, putting out fear out there and we get to make a change by putting out, you know, kind of faith-based things like, you know, believing, getting people to believe in themselves. Yeah, definitely. And I, I know that media right now is struggling in a lot of ways. Um, just like the whole media scene right now. It's, yeah. Everyone says it's the fake news. And uh, that I, I feel like there's like a lot of years there was social media said, oh, you know, fake news, don't listen to the TV, et cetera. And they fed off that and they really, yeah. you know, they thrived off that. And they, they obviously they're not going to change their, um, their blueprint. And they're always going to like push that fear because that's what people want to hear and listen to. But as we're now, social media has become this powerhouse yeah. and uh, the power is no longer in their hands. Uh, but where I sit with it, a lot of children, a lot of kids, you know, would go home and, Mum would be like, "Oh, hey, did you uh, did you hear about this on the news? Did you see that?" And the kids are like, "Mum, that happened on Facebook this morning." Like that, that's yeah. it. And and news is always delayed and behind, so they've got to go out there, film it, see it, and it's like all of that thing, all of that stuff already happened hours ago. So everything's instant now. So it's kind of hard for them to dictate where the story goes. They've got to really manipulate it and work a lot harder than what they used to. And also, the power in the people now. Like you look at influencers and people that have a large social media yeah. following, they actually can dictate the story quite well. Yeah. Like you have, let's say if the, mu- the news puts out, so the news says, hey, like this is what happened today at the Gold Coast, X, Y, Z. And then like three or four influencers are like, oh no, this happened. Why? Well, either that story has gone because this vault, the large social media following, they might have a couple million followers each or, or a million each. So it has way more views than whatever they're going to put up. Yeah, and it's just like that. That that story is gone. Their their views are down. It doesn't matter. They just wasted all their money, all their resources. As where this person, this influence, or this person, they just got this. Yeah, the news has got a, a you know a million dollar building with producers and productors and you know employees and staff, and they had to just film that whole story and use everything up, and then they just got shafted. That's where I feel like this real change right now, and and it's so important that we educate people that do have influence or followings that are. Uh, you know, that they are being watched and they are being heard and they are being seen. So it's important that they understand what they're putting out there. People are actually going to listen to and they actually have an opportunity to help and change people's lives as well. So that's something I feel strong about. Um, yeah, it's just you know, putting it out there in the right way as well. And then we all learn and, then, you know, it's, social media is fine for everyone. But, uh, yeah, it's it's also a very, uh, can be a very nasty place if you, if you play, play there as well. <laughs> yeah, as we've all caught criticism and it, it caught criticism on Facebook or Instagram somewhere. Uh, it's just that's just today's society, but you know you got to take the arrows as well. Yeah, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Well, yeah, man, thank you for sharing a bit about that and sharing about you know you are just like introducing yourself to to those that are listening on. Um, now, what I want to do, bro, I want to I want to get straight into it, man. Like, uh, I want to get straight into the meat of it, uh, not beat around the bush, just. Get straight in, man, to know the real side of Luke and, you know, the, the real side of, uh, from, from Mr. Hecker. And so, um, you know, one thing I believe in, and I, I share this in every podcast, is I always believe that before the glory, there's always a story. And I truly believe, bro, that you're, you're, getting one, you're, you're, you're actually getting some wins. You know, you're, you're getting, whether small or big, you know, you're actually making an impact in, in your, you know, if you, if you don't know, you know, uh, now you know, uh, podcast and, you know, the men's medicine, everything that you're doing, um, you're you're starting to reap those moments, and so uh, one thing I believe in, yeah, is um, before the glory, there's always a story. And so, bro, I want to get to know more about you, bro. I want to get right deep into the root 
behind um, you. And uh, yeah, man, I guess I guess the first thing I want to get straight to is, um, bro, is there any chance that you can possibly share about your upbringing? Yeah, bro, um, definitely. We'll go straight from there. My upbringing was, uh, for me, was, uh, when I was young, I kind of thought it was shit. <laughs> it didn't have, you know, I was like, this is so unfair. I played that blame game where I, uh, I was like, we don't have anything. I, I remember like, this is just like come to me now. I was like, my dad got me a bike when I was a kid. Um, and it was from the rubbish dump. You know? <laughs> he just got this old bike and put it together. <laughs> and I think my mum felt sorry for me. I can't remember like, cause I was very young. Cause you know, we just rode around on push bike. Uh, but we, but now that I look back at it, it was, um, it was really good. And, uh, I, I, I've learned those lessons from there to just make do with whatever it is I got. My mum ended up buying me a new bike years down the track, but like, I remember that was like one of my first bikes and this is this old shitty one. <laughs> and, uh, but like my childhood, I grew up in like in the shearing shed and a very country, very Aussie outback way, a lot of freedom. Like I had no rules, like legit, I had no rules. Um, when I think about it, oh, not no rules, but. My, the amount of freedom that my father always gave me um, was most more than most you know, adults would nearly have now. I was never uh, sheltered or hidden. Like He was very straight with me and honest about everything. Uh, and if I lied, I just got hiding. So uh, I grew up in, in an environment that was very accepting of who I was, very accepting of who I was. And I had to just, I could be whoever I wanted. I was free as a bird, free as a bird. Uh, I traveled around Australia. On the shearing shed, shearing shed, meeting a lot of people. I was fishing down the creek all day. That was kind of like most of my childhood. I didn't really go to too much school. Um, yep. Like we would, I'd mainly go to school for the first half of the year and the last half of the year we'd travel around. Uh, and man, if I, if I sum up my childhood, it would be freedom. Like I was so free. Yeah. But uh, where, I, where, I, where I got unstuck is when I went to high school, I went to yep. high school. I was fortunate enough, my old man sent me to a wooden school up in uh, Yapoon, up in Queensland, and, and I didn't like it, hey. I didn't <laughs> like it because they, they had rules. Like, And I was this guy, that this young kid that – and I, I remember getting dropped off too. Like, I knew nobody, nobody. Yeah. I was from this small country town. My mum dropped me up at a at boarding school and pretty much just like didn't bail, but she left. And I remember watching her drive off, and I was like, I'm here by myself. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen here. And that, for me, I really had to find my feet and find my place really quick because I didn't know where I fitted in because where I grew up in Quilpie, um, which is my hometown, is like uh, is like all just country boys and Aboriginal boys. So yep. I didn't. And then I went there and it was like very different, very, there's not any of that culture. And I didn't know where to fit in. There's all t- TI boys. So I ended up hanging with all the um, all the ballers up north. <laughs> so it was, took me a while to find my feet when I went to high school. Uh, but from there, like I guess as far as my education goes, I didn't really listen at all. I tried to get kicked out. I tried to go home. But my I'm so lucky that at school knew um, how to handle guys that were from the country because yep. they knew I wanted to go home. So I was doing everything I could. I was sneaking out, playing up. I wasn't going to school. I was I was just running off. Hey, I was just doing everything that I could do to possibly get kicked out of school. And they didn't kick me out. And I had to just, I do remember the day I was just sitting there. I was like, shit, they ain't going to kick me out. I ain't going home. Like, yeah. It didn't matter what I did. So I actually, they actually gave, I gave up on it. And I was like, I'm, I look like I'm here then. I'm going to stay there. I'm going to have to stay in school. And uh, yeah, like for me, growing up in the country is one of the most, probably humbling things that you can do. And it's, yeah. I, I, I love that about me now. There's something that I actually only just started speaking about like two or three years ago because like living in the Gold Coast, it's very, uh, it's not country. Yeah. And there's something I hid. Like people would be like, oh, where are you from, Luke? And I'm like, um, Goopy. And they're like, where's that? Where is that place? And I would tell them, they're like, oh, you're a country guy. I'm like, yeah, I am, man. It's like, that's a true country that's from the middle of nowhere. Yeah, uh, and I, and I love the traits and the honesty that you get out there. The the country is such a humbling place, and yeah, that's kind of my background. And like, is a little bit is where I where I grew up and how how I came to be where I am. But I f- I feel like after that, that's where things went south. Um, yeah. School, even like when I was at school, like the last couple of years of high school, I kind of picked up my act a little bit. I won some 
like academic awards. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I start. I actually got some A's. I think I won some award and I got some A's on my report card, which I'd never had before, and that was in the last year. So, you know, I was a late bloomer to the party. Um, but from there, I went and uh, I went and played football in Redcliffe. I um, was fortunate enough to go there. But like I went straight from schoolies straight to um, straight to go preseason up in Redcliffe, and it was hectic. Hey, it was yeah. so hectic. Like I don't know what years were like back at school, but when I was in school, high school, I was I was, I was taking drugs when I was in high school. Yep. Um, I smoked a lot of weed. I was doing fucking um, ecstasy pills, fucking everything, um, everything I could get my hands on. So I pretty much went from schoolies, which is obviously a week of just full going party, yeah, uh, to um, up to Redcliffe and started preseason. And you know, I guess that was kind of after I left there. Like, there's a bit of a story around that as well. Like, I went there and I was just partying. Yep. Uh, I feel like schoolies was a real tipping point for me. Hey, where I kind of just really went so hard on myself and just went full tilt into that whole party scene that it uh, was kind of hard to shake it after that. I just had that knack for it and I loved it and I was really good at it. And yeah, I left Redcliffe um, and I went to up to Rockhampton and that's where things got really fucked up. Oh. Really <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. thought it was going to be like, oh, it's going to be good, but it's like, no, it's getting deeper. No, no. It, that's where things got real fucked yeah, up. Yeah. So, um, how do I break that down? It's kind of like I went up there to stay with one of my best mates. Well, he is my best mate, sorry, Mark Kavner. And like we'd been friends from school and shit like that. And I, and I missed him as well. And we got a house and we we're living in a house together. And like, are we like, the thing is, is drugs got hold of us really quick at a young age. Like when you're all smoking weed and doing friggin' ding dongs at school in grade eleven, uh, and you don't know the effects of them, you don't understand drugs, you don't understand like how they make you feel and emotions and stuff like that. It was a very hard time for me to understand like my emotions and feelings and what were going on. Like when I look at it now, I'm like, and I was a confused young man. I was a confused yeah. kid and I didn't know any better. Um, and I was always suppressing everything. I didn't know how to talk to people. I barely knew how to have a conversation. Friends of mine would give me shit and say, shut up, heck, stop talking. So obviously they were being sarcastic because I'd never said anything. <laughs> and it was, it was a very confusing time for myself. So, you know, there I am. I'm, what am I, I'm 18, nine, no, I'm like 19 then. I'm a confused young man. I don't know what I'm doing. I've got, you know, bad drug habits. I'm smoking weed every day. I was rolling up doobies every day at work, smoking, uh, and just doing drugs on the weekend and I can't, that's when I fell into selling drugs. That's how I very first started selling drugs. I was wheeling and dealing drugs, being this young guy that, oh man, I just didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Hey, like, to be honest. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say I was a drug dealer. I was a, I was a drug consumer that had some shit on him. I was just like the, I was a consumer. I, yeah, I wasn't making, I was making money, but I was eating and doing as many drugs as I could. And, uh, that's where, I had a spiral there for about three to four years where my life was, uh, it was only going one way. It was only yeah. going one way. It was going shit. And I really needed to pick my act up, but like I started, like, can we, yeah, we can talk about selling drugs on here. <laughs> and it was, for, for me, I, I, I used to sit at the pub and I used to sell, um, sell dingers, man. When I was like 19, 17, no, I was like 18 and 18 or 19. I used to sit in the pokey room and I'd get like 50 dingers or whatever. Um, sell them before like 10 o'clock and then that was me I'd go out and party and just get like fucking messed up all night um, and that went on for a couple of years and just just living it living it up as a young man did but when things got really bad it was then uh, ice come to Rockhampton wow yeah uh, that was when things got real heavy and uh, I remember the transition because back then they had a thing called speed for the young whippersnappers out there that wouldn't know what that is um, and you know you get speed and it's like, you know, you can get in a little bag and it's like a little, like wet sugar kind of thing. And then ice obviously started coming up there. And I kind of knew what ice was because I'd been traveled around down south and I'd had a little bit of experience. And But that's when it all started phasing in. And like in that time, we, like a lot of kids and a lot of guys that are new just thought it was speed. They're like, oh, it's smokable speed. And I'm like, no, it ain't. That's ice, man. But like back then I didn't know how to say no or didn't know what it was. Yep. And... Obviously, I started smoking ice, and that was like I would have been well, maybe 19, 20, about 20 then. I was around 20, 21, 20, yeah. 
and uh man that was a that was just a friggin' storm like yeah. the amount of shit i had to go through now realizing how confused it was how bad it was for my mental health and, and like obviously then i started selling it as well but man that was like a hurricane like legit yeah. through our whole friends group i remember sitting there and uh being going to parties because that was just everything that we did every weekend during the week etc uh and people were smoking ice and you know when you smoked ice at the start you would uh you would go hide in the toilets or you'd go down under the house wherever it was is very shamed upon if you were there smoking that shit you were fucking like they were like throwing you down yeah um and I remember there was a stage there where I clicked one night and I was just sitting at this house and everyone was just like playing PlayStation and shit and they were just smoking ice on the couch. And I was like, whoa, whoa. And I was like, but there was no, it was just normal. It was very yeah. normal. And this was just a younger crew, crew that I knew. And I was like, fuck, man. I was like, this is actually just like a straight norms now. No one's talking. Everyone's sitting there smoking ice. And I remember that when that whole wave come up north and, man, it, it uh, it like it ate away at me, my friends, everything, and um, you know the people were injecting it and you know doing needles and shit like that, putting it yeah. in their arm and <clears throat> experimenting with it. And it's like it legit. Yeah, this is why I um I I like to speak strongly about it and about the drug scenes because uh, I think kids need to be understand it, yeah, uh, not be sheltered from it as well. I was never sheltered from it. Um, but I wish I understood it a little bit more and someone was open about their stories like I am and it, uh, it fucking ate away at my, my friends and my community. Like, it's just like a wave, man. It's just like a plague. Like, just fucking nuked everyone. Um, and just within, you know, six to eight months, everyone was just legit cooked out. Hey, like, just yeah. done. Um, a lot of mates had gone to rehab. People had gone, I know friends that had went home to see their family at Christmas or Easter or whatever it was and just didn't come back because their parents would have looked at them. I look at it now and I'm like, that, their parents would have seen their son come back after six to eight months, obviously because they're living out of town and just being like, nah, what the hell? Like you wouldn't have, now that I see it, I'm like, oh shit, you would have just been able to pick it up like that as a parent. And uh, for me, that was, uh, and that was some of the darkest days I ever had to uh, endure. Hey, like the amount of paranoia the the confusion confusion hey like drugs are so confusing especially for a young male not knowing what to do man it's just like a really fucked up deep time hey and there's yeah. probably people that are listening to this right now and they're in that or they're on the back end of it as well and they're like oh, okay how do i get out of that and we'll touch on that as well but <clears throat> that like that's kind of where like the some of the lowest parts of my life have been like in my younger years that happened from about 20 through about 23 um there's a good solid year uh years there and i didn't work etc things were just fucking all over the shop and i was actually so lucky i had a um i had a girl she, she saved me saved oh me. well um she saved me from the addiction and the habit i feel anyway she you know ended up being my partner she was my best friend at the time uh she's kind of the only person i spoke to and uh obviously we ended up being together and she was just so strict on me hey like if I said I was coming home at, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, whatever it was, if I didn't come home at that time, she'd just lock me out. And uh, the house that I lived in at the time, it wasn't, it wasn't far from hers. So it was kind of a real haven for me to get away from that uh, community and get away from those people. So like kudos to her. And um, if, if it wasn't for her, I'd probably, you know, what the fuck I'd be doing now. Cause yeah. It definitely wouldn't be anything good. Um, yeah. And just, you know, for the people that understand that whole drug scene, it's not a, not a nice scene to be in. People are freaking taking people's money. It's like you're doing drugs all the time. It's nasty. It's so dirty and yucky. Um, yeah. and it's like the paranoia, the amount of paranoia you get from smoking ice is um, people don't understand it. Eh? Like, yeah. I was looking out my window all the time, checking my phone. Like I'd sit on my couch legit for hours just with the phone plugged in, just like just scrolling through freaking the Instagram and Facebook, just being paranoid as hell. Like uh, relationships, you couldn't have a solid relationship with anyone because of the paranoia and the amount of, um, you know, the amount of uncomfortability you had in your own self that you projected that on everyone else. And it was, it ate away at me. Hey man, like yeah. doing drugs, doing ice is a, it's a soul leader. Hey. And uh, a lot of people that are in it don't actually realize it until they leave it. And I didn't realize, I just thought it was a norm. Yep. It was okay. But, uh, Smoking ice and being in that drug scene, it's a it's a soul leader. 
it's a real soul leader, hey, and it's uh, it's it's really hard for me to watch now seeing people in that space. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, that was some of my darker years there. Um, and yeah, as far as that goes, man, I like as far as even like talking on the whole suicide basis thing. Like when I think about it now, that was like if there was a moment that I would have d- died or taken my life, I definitely would have been around then. Yeah. Um, and there, there was many times where I considered it. Uh, but at the same time, there's many times I would have, like, I don't even fucking remember half of it to be yeah. honest. Hey? Like I, I've met people now. Um, and they're like, yeah, bro, I met you back. Like, X, y, Z. I'm like, shit, man. Sorry. I'm like, they told me like the year. And I was like, bro, I was fucking out of my mind then. And, uh, yeah, I, I, there was a lot of years there, even going back to Rockhampton um, and going to those scenes, I had a real hatred for that town, hey. I fucking hated that town. Yeah. I was like, I'm fucking never going back there just because of the stigma related yep. around it. Yep. And uh, I was just like, you know what? Fuck them. Fuck this town. I don't want to go anywhere near it. But now I see it and it's a little bit, I have a lot more empathy for it. And I actually, you know, I respect the place and I respect the journey that it taught me because I definitely wouldn't be here where I am now without that. Without yeah. that. And uh, that's such an important part to my story that I never want to miss out as well. So that's why I'm like, you know, thanks for asking about that because not not many people know that. Even I spoke about it a little while ago and I had a podcast and um, they're like, oh, you smoked ice. And you were like doing that. And I was like, yeah, man. I was like, yeah, I had to tidy my shit up. I had to get my shit together because it was it was really poor, you know, and I, I had no, um, wasn't looking after myself and I was in a really bad mind frame. But uh fortunate enough to pull myself out of that as well yeah that's, that's kind of like a little bit of that story as well from where i come from bro that is so crazy man bro before i even like share anything bro i was going to say thank you you know thank you so much for being so transparent one thing i love is you know just people being transparent but one thing i really love the most is when men do you know when men actually are really open and transparent and even that bro just listening to your story and a bit of background and upbringing like you were a person that wouldn't talk, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't yeah. really say anything. And to see you just open up about everything, you know, from, from the moment of you living in the country and, you know, being free, not really having much rules to going into school and then, um, you know, hating school and wanting to get kicked out. And then from school, obviously into schoolies and they're getting into the drug scenes, like just you sharing a bit about your story. Like I'm so, I'm so impacted by it, bro. And I don't really know right now, there are people out there probably listening, being like, Man, I really love this guy <laughs> because yeah. of the story. Yeah, it's um, and it's so important to tell all of your story as well. And yeah. I, I remember the first time someone was like, "Oh, you should tell your story and you know tell what you did." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know. Nah, nah it's not important. Yeah, nah, no one wants to hear me doing all the things that I did and all the dumb shit that I did." And then I actually was speaking about it to a few people, and they're like, well, "I never knew that about you. Why did yeah. you never say that?" And I was like, <laughs> "Um." I was like, shit, yeah, maybe it is. And uh, yeah, I, I do remember the first time someone mentioned something to me in a click. Um, and he said, hey, bro, he stopped me. And he's like, hey, I was listening to your Instagram. I was talking, you know, I heard you talking. He's like, that. I, I took that on board and I really appreciate it. And I was like, I had that feeling. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, bro, yeah, no, thank you. Appreciate it. And I was like, oh, man, I was like, I actually helped that guy by telling him what I said. Yeah. Because um, he resonated with it. And uh, I was like, that's so important. But uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, that's why you got to be careful what, not careful what you say, but be, be honest about what you're saying yep. as well. You can't, you can't fake honesty. You can't fake honesty. And that's what I've learned. And if you just tell it how it is, people may like it, they may not like it, but they'll always respect it because it was honest and true. And uh, yeah, that was kind of, yeah, there's, there's so much, there's so many things to that story. I <laughs> Like, I, even for me, like, going back over the years, I'm trying to remember, like, I still pick up bit, bits and pieces of it because, um, like, I don't think people know, not everyone can understand, like, what, what that kind of drug does to you. And yep. it just it eats away at you, your memory. There's a lot, there's a few years that I lost, um, but I'll go on the back of that as well and tell you what happened there, like, where I, how I tried to get out of that. And I, um. I was fortunate enough to get a uh, start in Rockhampton, uh, in Gladstone. Uh, one of my bros, he gave me a job up there, and I'm so grateful for him because I'd probably still be in Rockhampton if it wasn't for him. Uh, James Deacon, and oh man, he just brought me into his house and gave me a job. 
and I could work hard. That was the one thing I was so lucky for, man. I, I could, al- I can always work hard, and I have always worked hard. Yeah. And that's just from being in the Sheeran says as a young kid, and you know what my father taught me, uh, and he, yeah, man, he he took me in and he gave me a job up in Gladstone, and there was a few years there where I got to be clean, like I was clean, like I didn't, I didn't do any drugs, and that was like the snap. That was the break that I needed, like. I got out of that environment. I was fortunate enough that he could put me in this new environment that where there was different kinds of people that weren't doing all the drugs and doing all the things. And I was like, oh, man, this is what it's like. And I just started my climb there. And uh, I really tidied my act up there in Gladstone. And then I decided to move to the Gold Coast. Um, but yeah, on the back of that, it was like uh, there's a lot of years there. I, I like When I think about it, and I've said this before, like the only reason why I moved to the Gold Coast to start my construction business, obviously, because I knew I could do it, but um, I was wanted to prove people wrong. <laughs> yeah, come on. I had this real hunch on my shoulder for so many years, um, because I went to Gladstone, I tidied my shit up, and then I moved to the Gold Coast, and a lot of people, you know, obviously they're going to throw a lot of judgment. I didn't know how to handle it then either. You know, people, you know, throwing you down under the bus, etc., like that. You know, and I always had this saying where I was like, "Haters, doubters made me do it." <laughs> And um, although it was very good, that that drove me for so many years. Um, and I came to the Gold Coast to start a construction business, but I realised I was doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I realised, and I and I had a stage here where I and it was a couple of years ago, um, where I was sitting in there and I was like, things went right. I was like, what the hell? I'm like feeling really off. And I was like, shit, I got no more people doubting me. I was like, that drive was not there, <laughs> and I was like, no one's doubting me because I'm doing it. And yeah. I realized my, my whole drive and mission, I was using that as my drive to actually yeah. um, energize myself to get out there and prove people wrong. I was like, shit, I had to really pivot there and change. Um, and that was kind of like my story coming to the Gold Coast as well. But on the back end of that, and I've spoken about this many times as well, and I've had, like, uh, when I first come to the Gold Coast, like, I went out of that drug scene, went from Rockhampton, went to Gladstone, cleaned myself up, and then I come to the Gold Coast. And here I am, young guy from um, the bush down and thing, and Gold Coast has cocaine. <laughs> I didn't know what that is. You know, I kind of knew what it was. Um, I knew what it was, but I didn't never had it in Rockhampton. So it was, it was very, uh, it was very confusing for me because it was like, shit, okay, cool, we got this cool party drug. Um, and I know a lot of my background and a lot of the darkest times I've had have been around drugs and alcohol, and it's why I don't drink anymore or do drugs. Yeah. And you know, here I was, a young guy, came to the Gold Coast, started making some money here, landed myself a couple of good jobs and gigs and shit like that. And I was just, everyone was just doing bags. I just thought that was the, the norm, the norm. Like I, I met a lot of businessmen and they were just getting on the bag all day, yeah. um, going out. And I had, what did I have? I had, I had two failed relationships here while I lived in the Gold Coast and that was just all, my, my poor behavior, just acting like a little boy. Yeah. I, um, yeah, man, I, I just, you know, I moved here and I was just being a dickhead, hey? Like, yeah. legit, like I, I, I didn't realize, like, you could go out every night here. I wasn't coming home. I was, being, I was a fucking piss poor partner, hey, as far as it goes. And it was, yeah. it was quite sad, you know. So I was hurt in so many ways, but I didn't realize it. And I was, and I was taking, you know, I, I took both my exes through that whole trauma here as well. And, uh, you know, I'm just thankful that they hung in there and, and stuck it out with me for so long, too. Cause I was a dick, hey? Yeah, I was say dick, man. It was hard times. Yeah, well, man, well. And would you say, bro, like with that, would, like was that like one of your biggest setbacks? Was the the drug scene? Would, would that be the yeah. biggest setback that you've had? Yeah, bro, definitely. It's, it's if we're talking about depression and and uh, lowest yeah. times in my life, it, it came down to my drugs and uh, the community and the people that I hung out with at the time. Although they're not bad people, uh, they probably never realised it as well, but. It was, it was really shit, man. Like, that was, it just confused me. And if I didn't have drugs around me, I would have been in a fucking far better spot, um, obviously. Yeah. But it's just like, not even if I didn't have them, if I just had someone that explained them to me and, yeah, and I yeah. understood it a little bit, like, that's okay. And I feel like that's a problem with um, parents these today. They, they crowd and they don't, it's like if you educated kids on why they take drugs and what they do to you, oh, man, that's so, that's such a better thing because, if you're saying no, don't do it, don't do it, it's bad. 
they're going to do it. They're going to do it, like, babe. It's just nature. Like, they're going to do it. And, yeah, that's just what a lot of kids and a lot of young men these days, and women as well, that's why they get into it because they've been told they can't do it. So, like, oh, shit, I kind of want to do it now. And, yeah, that's, that's my take on that as well. That's definitely one of the biggest lessons that I learned has been, you know, what happens when I consume drugs and why and getting into that scene. It's not just the drugs as well what comes with it it's the people that are there and the environment that you're into is very toxic it it can be vile and it's up and down there's no no good mindset there it's it, um yeah it's it just it's surrounded by greed and discomfort yeah, so, yeah it's, it's hard it's hard man hard to be there yeah man that's crazy bro that's crazy and like for me like i've never taken drugs in my life and so I'll have no clue whatsoever, bro, how it is. Uh, but one thing I do, I, I, I actually have mates who've done drugs and I have mates that have, um, you know, been um, a consumer and also a person that is, you know, sold drugs and so things like that. Like I know people, not saying that like I have connections because I don't, um, but it's like I know people like that. And all I do is I just say to them like, hey, man, like I don't know what you're going through. Knowing that I'm a person that has no clue how it feels, mm to take drugs, but it's like, Hey man, like the, the best thing I can do is possibly just walk on this like journey with you, you know, of you receiving that freedom of getting yourself out of um, drugs and certain things like that. And so, bro, like what was the game changer for you? Like was like when it came to um, you getting out of the drug scene um, or taking drugs, like what was your, um, your output? Like was, cause I mean, I, 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 I overheard you mention about um, a certain woman, um, that had hmm. changed you. Was that the the main catalyst for you? No. So me, I I had a you know things not only the drugs but the relationships was a big thing for me as well because I always wanted to be a good partner and I, yeah. I stuck at it. I fucking stuck at it, man. And uh, it was just as many things, I you know I had partners and I cheated on them. And I was just typical, just being just running them up. And yeah. uh, for me, yeah, it was. There, like as far as when I really started to turn, it was my last uh, serious girlfriend, which her name was Sherry, um, and I'd had the first, you know, three partners before that. Yep. And the, all of the problems that she said, like why, like why we split up, like I think I, was, I can't remember if I broke up first. It was, either way, it, was, it, wasn't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't good. It wasn't good. <laughs> but all the issues and problems that were spoken about and what come up were the exact same. Was the exact same. And I was like, ah, oh, is this that moment in my life where I, I remember I was like walked out of the laundry and I was sitting there and I was like, had a coffee and I was on the step, I think. And I was like, I was like they all can't be wrong. I was like, yeah. they all can't be wrong. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're all saying the same thing. I was just like, it's just like that moment where you just slap in the face and it's like, it's like I had to just swallow my, um, my arrogance and be like, far, it's me. Yeah. It's me. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the guy here that's fucked all these up and it's all my shitty behaviors that has caused these things. You want to change it, you're going to have to really start. And from that moment on, hey, I, I just decided, I was like, you know what? And even my partner then, like I said to her, I remember having this conversation with her. I was like, look, I've got a lot of shit I need to work on because um, we're talking back in, back together, et cetera. I said, I don't know what's going to happen. I said, we could possibly get back together in a couple months. I don't know. I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't know what this journey is going to be like. And I was like, I have to really work on myself because where I am now is not where I need to be and it's not where I want to be and I need to change as a man. I need to start owning my bullshit. And uh, not long after that was kind of how we started in men's medicine. Yeah. Um, it was not long after. I think it might have been about six to eight months. And, you know, I just really just dived off the chart, hey, and just was like, fuck it, I'm going to change all this bullshit, start being a better man, start owning my shit. Uh, and a, I feel like there's a real pivotal moment where I took charge of my life and my ownership of things, which was, uh, it was actually in a mushroom ceremony. So there was that moment as well where, I, you know, I had that pivotal moment where I had to swallow all the bullshit and be like, okay, it's me. Um, and then I stepped into a mushroom ceremony. I was got invited one night. For those who don't know what that is, it's uh, mushrooms, you know, psychedelics. Yep. And ceremonial, it's not like we sit around the back of the house, just get some beers and get fucked up. Um, it's very spiritual. It's very deep. And, uh, yeah, man, in that ceremony, um, I'll explain what happened. And this is where I had to, where my life really took a turn. 
and this is this is the actual night where men's medicine started too. Um, it's not it's not a story where many people talk about this one. Um, but yeah, we all met on a mushroom ceremony one night. Our our whole core group, the main guys that started it, uh, we all met on this mushroom ceremony. But I'll save that story. And uh, for for me, what happened in that story was I actually took ownership of everything. What came up for me in that night time was uh, I actually had to go apologize to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, cleaning, clearing, and it was like I, in my intentions, like because when you sit down, you got to set an intention. And my intention was show me my bright future, show yeah. me my bright future. Um, that's what I was asking to see. And uh, when I got in there, it was like a bad dream, bro. It was like a real bad dream. And uh, because what happened was these things were coming up, like with my past and my relationships and all the things that I'd I'd done wrong and just like left left and I'd run and I'd been running and I'd been running for so long um, running from all my bullshit or the lies or the things that I'd done wrong and I uh, it was like a legit bad dream it just kept going around in circles around in circle, and it was just like it, the story would go around and it'd be there and I was like I'm in this mushroom I'm like this shit ain't going away Yeah. and what I had to do is I had to surrender I had to yeah. accept what had happened I had to accept the past um, and for me that was such a like, that moment I was emotional. I cried my eyes out. I was bored. And it was just like I had to come to terms with all the things that I and accept accept what had happened and give forgiveness to myself for what, all of the things that I had done, um, not only to myself, my partners and my friendship group and just the disrespect that I'd, you know, done to my body. And, uh, yeah, come, come on. And the outside of that, I had to apologize to my partners, my ex-partners. Um, one, for being a shitty partner. Two, for... Uh, robbing them out of having kids because they all yeah. wanted to have babies and settle down, etc. And they were really good girls, and I and I and I was being a dickhead, and I didn't want to do any of that, and I and I mistreated them and things. So I, uh, yeah, after I ended up ringing them and clearing the air with all of them, and uh, you know, across all those things off with them, and really apologised. And uh, it was actually such a freeing moment, hey. Yeah. And but from then, like when I crossed off all the past and forgiven myself for everything, um, I really started to. That's when I really started to put a real spring in my step hey yeah. and uh that's yeah because i'd been running from my past for so long um and i was like yeah that was one of those pivotal moments in my life where i look back and i'm like i really started to own shit then and own who i was and not until then not until then that was when i could actually truly see my bright future you weren't going to get anything good if you weren't willing to accept who you were and that's why i'm so transparent about everything now because i'm like that's me. That's part of the story and there's no uh, hiding and I won't ever hide it as well. And although it was something I was disgusted with for so long, that's part of who I am and who I am today is, um, you know, that's me. It's the journey, bro. And I love that about me. <laughs> yeah, man. I love it, bro. I love that. I like, I love that now, like the, like the, the Mr. Hecker right now that, that we get to see and that we get to have conversations with and listen to is not the same as he was before. And I and I guess even even that too, man. Like uh, I'm starting to realize in you, just and even that. Like for those out there, giving you guys a bit of clarity, we have not met. <laughs> this is the first time that we've met. But just by listening to his story and hearing him out, what I've learned from um, Luke is that uh, in his upbringing, right, because he was in a place of freedom, right, he didn't have much rules. So as a result, when it came to going out into areas where they had rules, he's like, I don't want rules like I, I just want i want to do my own thing i want to do my own thing i don't want to listen to you like all the teachers out there i don't listen to you and so from like what like i'm, I'm just assuming this i don't know if it's true obviously uh, like luke will help, like, like luke will help me out on this but from what i'm seeing is uh, like it sounds to me that drugs was the way out like yeah, the definitely. way out of the the rules you know because obviously you know, you taking certain things and consuming it, um, it makes you feel a lot more free, not knowing that like there's actually rules in place of you not taking it and consuming it. And you also mentioned too about education, you know, um, if you were educated on it, um, you know, about drugs, it would have been a lot different. Mm, yeah, definitely, man. And that's, that's, uh, that's right on the money there because if I had someone that uh, I guess even, you know, taught me about drugs i probably wouldn't have done them as much i wouldn't have consumed them as much but even on the the back end of that that's exactly why i did it as well because i was running i was like a you know being out in the country you're just a wild loose kid you can do whatever the fuck you want um yeah. and then being in putting cast into a normal society is very different so 
I didn't know how to deal with it and didn't know how to cope with it. So it was definitely my out there. Um, but on the back of that, yeah, if people were educated on that side of things, like, don't it, like, just with a less of a filter, less of a filter. Like, if you had shown me, like, a guy that was fully burnt out on ice um, when I was younger, though, that's quite confronting for a lot of kids and a lot of parents wouldn't be, like, yeah. to let their kids see that. Um, change my whole perspective on it. Change yep. my whole perspective on it. It would have changed my whole perspective on it a lot. As where I'd seen that when I was in the drug scene, but I, I cast, I didn't know how to observe it or look at it because I was already in there. Um, but yeah, being, you know, I haven't got any kids, but if if there is advice, you know, being on, being a kid like that, um, two parents and don't don't try to filter them and hide them so much because when they leave your sight, yep, they're gonna they're gonna see it anyway. They're gonna yep. see it. They've got phones. Everything's there. They're exposed to everything these days. Yep. So the just the more straight you can be, um, the better. Even my father, he would he would ask me if I was doing drugs. I was like, yeah, yep, sweet, I'll do drugs. He, I remember he asked me if I was doing um, XD pills and shit, and I was like, yep, you know who I am. Yeah, I used to say he was very um, very open with me about it, but he was probably on the, the opposite end of the scale where he's a little bit too loose with it. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. He's like, as long as I wasn't lying, that, that was what he was, but he just didn't know how to govern it. He just didn't have the right tools where... Um, to know how to cope with it as well. But I was always telling him, he's like, you on drugs? I'm like, yep. And that was it. Okay. He didn't lie. Fair enough. And I was like, <laughs> you know, he didn't know how to take the conversation from there. It's like, why are you doing the drugs? Why are you doing this? How are you feeling? What, you know, why? Um, but that's okay. We like, we live and we learn as well. And yeah, I know, I know. And drugs is a real big topic for me as well, because I see so many people struggling with it. And yep. it's such a, such a big thing. Like for me, I don't know too many people that don't do drugs or have tried or yeah. like, yeah, there's so many people that struggle with it or have struggled with it. And it's like, only, if only we could just educate them a little bit better. Yeah. I'm not expecting everyone to never not do it again. And that's it. Like, well, we're all going to be like clean slate. Yeah, do it. That's fine. But understand why you're doing it. <laughs> As well, no one really understood why we were sitting around smoking crack for two days. <laughs> it's just like the thing. I'm like, why are we here? Um, so yeah, that was, that's only my take on that as well. Yeah. So it's trying to educate kids that, as to why they're doing it. Yeah. hundred percent, man. And like, bro, I love that you shared about that because you're, you're a person that was a consumer. Like you were a consumer of, of drugs and taking drugs and, and wanting that freedom, um, like temporarily or like having that instant feel of being free. And like, you know, just by us talking or having this conversation, uh, one thing I'm thinking about is I think one thing that uh, schools should change is possibly, and like obviously don't have to change it, like whatever, but like if this is like my take on it, it's like if you actually had people like yourself come in and do a talk, like a person that's actually taken drugs, like come in and be fully real with the kids and transparent, I reckon 100% sure they won't touch it. Like yeah. 100% sure like they won't touch it at all because it's coming from a person that's number one has consumed it Two, like they'll realize, okay, this is the true, like this is actually a real thing because yeah, it's all right to do videos. Yeah. It's all right to do these like, um, you know, testimonies of people sharing their story, but the real impact is when they literally come into the school, come face to face to a drug addict or a, you know, before yeah, man. drug addict. Yeah, man. Fucking right. I was like, and this is a, like, even when people, I never admitted I was a drug addict. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, no, nah, I just can, you know, I just like the party. <laughs> I like the party. But when someone explained the drug addict to me, they're like, can you go, like, can you go out and have a beer and not, um, not get some coke or? Beer? I was like, no, nah, pretty hard. But like, man, you, 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 that's a drug addiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, shit, man, I am. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, shit, maybe I am. And it took me a long time to come to terms with that as well because I'd always cast a lot of shade on people that had that um, that on them, that label. And I was like, nah, that's not me. Man. That's them. And yeah. then I realized, I was like, actually, that's me. That's me, man. I was like, that's sad. I was like, fuck. I have to come, that's, I have to, come to terms with that. But yeah, that was – and I'm so grateful for all those times as well. It's, yep. it's allowed me to like definitely dive in in special areas as well. Like now where I you know, come and – with men and 
they're in that area or they've been in that space and they're like, oh, shit, how do I get out of it? It's allowed me to give them really solid advice because I've actually walked the road. Yep, yep. Walked the road. And I'm like, I've been down that road, bro, and lots of guys are like, no, you haven't. You know, because I, I, right now, like, sweet, I, I feel like I've looked after myself quite well. I dress well. I look after myself. And they're like, no, you weren't doing that. I'm like, bro, I'll show you a photo. <laughs> 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 and it, um, yeah, and it's just been able to resonate. When I start talking to them, they're like, oh, shit, maybe he was doing that. Yeah. Because um, they know the feeling and something yep. that's being able to relatable and it's, it's important to have that near Arsenal as well, especially like going into areas, special mental health like that uh, with men. It's so important. And uh, yeah, man, it's um, yeah, it's, it's a crazy old road that we live out here today. And uh, I'm so I'm just for me, I'm just sitting here right now and just telling it because it's been a little while since I've had to explain that story to someone. Yep. Um, and I'm actually really like I just had a big like sense of. Uh, gratitude come over me hey and i'm like shit man i'm like because i'm sitting in my podcast room now and i'm like because when you when we were talking before i actually had to take myself back to a few different days and times so i could like think about it yeah and then i'm like now i'm sitting here and i'm looking around i'm like bro i'm like shit man it's james and i'm really grateful right now (laughs) so thanks for bringing that up today as well as um yeah, I just had a, you know, I'm just feeling really grateful about well, you know, the journey that I've taken and how it's led me where I am today. No, nah, all good, bro. All good, man. Like, it's it's funny because I, I start to realize, um, you know, when I when I do run a podcast, um, I don't realize how much of an impact the special guest has. Like, yeah. <laughs> like they're not receiving so much impact, and they're like, oh wow, I'm actually happy that I jumped on. Like, that's not my intention actually like that's not my real intention i don't have that as a goal but it's just something that like i love to do like i love people to feel like uh you know feel homely even though it's virtual like it's like just imagine if we're actually in a room and how different uh, the vibe would be yeah but and and thanks for having me on man like i I really appreciate as well because it's not it's been a long time since i've been on the opposite end and and uh telling this side of my story is um you know what it's funny how the world delivers hey i actually needed this today it's, it's um I, I my thing this morning was how do I feel more grateful today? Yeah, well, how do I feel more grateful today? Um, and yesterday was a day of you know I was, I'm very transparent of things. This week has been a bit of a fucked up week for me. Um, oh. I feel, I'm feeling a little bit. I don't know. I was like, ah, things were off this week. I yep, couldn't yep. get no momentum, and I was like, shit, what's going on? I'm trying to keep going, and I've been training, I've been doing these things. And this morning, my thing was gratitude, and I woke up this morning, and I was grateful for things. But I didn't really feel it. Didn't yeah, really true. feel it. And I just felt it then. I was like, man, the world delivers, baby. I was just like, and, that was, and now I'm like, I got that little spring in my step. Um, yeah, come on, man. Week, you know, for me, is, uh, it's been a hard week. A few things threw me off. Um, yep. The, the question on the weekend um, where I had that guy, he asked me about my why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why I do this. And, and I, you know, that was struck me because I got, I, I'm really in touch with my instinct. And yeah. my gut feeling, and I, I got in the car and I was like, "Fuck, do I lie to that guy?" I was like, <laughs> "I didn't, I didn't just get in this because I had a hard time." I was like, "I've been in this work and had hard times." Yeah. And I was like, "Was that really why I did it?" And that shook me up a bit and threw me off for a few days. Is that? And one other thing tomorrow uh, that I come up with today, and I'll have to speak into it now. Um, and it was doing a tour out to the bush to the country because we were just speaking about how I grew up in the country. Yeah. Uh, taking our men's medicine out to the country and out to the outback of Australia because um, I feel like the people out there need it just as much as the people do in the city. And I've, uh, I'm uh thinking about doing, a, like I guess what I would call it, as a uh, cold run where yeah, I go and on, visit man. all those towns um, yeah. and just do my work, you know, not, not organize any special events, not take any money from anyone, not charge anyone. And I'm just going to go do a cold run as I would call Come it. Come on, bro. Know, go out there and do it <laughs> and it's just i was looking at my calendar this morning um and because i've been feeling off and this showed this this actual talk this conversation of me going out to the country and sharing their work and working with men in the community is uh it's shown up before and i've had a few come up with my breath work and a few more meditations and i've yep. kind of avoided it yeah. and I, I feel like that's why i'm off at the moment because <laughs> i've been hiding from it yeah. and, and that's why i had to say it on here i was like shit man i was like Oh, it's there, but you know, and for me, I, I trust my intuition. I trust yep, my intuition. Yep. And that's what my intuition is telling me. So, 
Um, and it scares me to go out there too. So I'm really on, honest about that because I don't know what's out there and yep. I don't know how it's going to go. And, you know, that's just me being vulnerable right now. I'm like, I'm scared to go out there and uh, I don't know how it's going to go for me standing in front of um, a bunch of guys out there that are, you know, in their, between their 30s and 50s that are, you know, why would they want to listen to me? And I'm like, okay, cool. I know why now. I know why. They've got a story to tell um, and my story can help people out there. Um, with what they're going through. And I know that they'll get great value out of what I have to teach them and what I have to bring to them. Um, but yeah, man, that's what, now I've got to do it because <laughs> I just said it. <laughs> so I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. I was like, fuck, if I say it on here, I've got to do it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, shit, now I've got to do it. So come into the bush, guys. Come into the country. Come <laughs> to do our work. <laughs> oh, that's amazing, bro. That's amazing. And bro, I feel like, you know, the best person that would uh, take that role is you, man. You know, you're, you're from the bush, you know, that's your home. That's, that's your route. You know, that, that's where everything stems from, bro. You know, everything that you're doing right now, um, you know, with uh, your podcast and you being part of men's medicine, even bro, even just you leaving the, 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 the construction life, you know, the, like, like owning your own construction business, like all that, I, I truly believe, man, like if it wasn't for you living in, you know, the, the, the sheds, you know, um, living in the shelters, like, Bro, you wouldn't be even been here, man. So, like, yeah. bro, I'm I'm all I'm all for it, bro. Like, I'm all for the journey. Obviously, it's gonna be like um, there's um, there's like like there's no certainty whatsoever um, yeah. on what's gonna happen. But um, I feel like yeah, the best person is you, bro, because that's where you're from, man. Like that's your, that's like your literal home. As much as you're in the city, you know, in the in the Gold Coast, like the one thing you can't leave is your home. So yeah, man, I'm all for it, bro. Like I'm, I'm gonna keep you accountable on this one. That's what I wanted to hear, bro. That's that's exactly what I needed to hear. Um, because I was like thinking about it this morning. I was like, am I mad? I'm like, am I mad? I'm like, but when you just said that then to me about, uh, yeah, you know, you're the guy to do it. I was like, you know what? I am because no one else that I know out there has ventured out and done what I've done. 100% no one, bro. No, I don't know anyone out there that does work like I do um, and has left the actual town and gone to the city. I'm like, Shit, man, I was like, that's, that's me. That's my spot. That's my space. I have to go out there. Um, cause there's people out there that are struggling as well. Not just in the cities, those small country towns. Um, they have a lot of trouble as well, especially with drugs as well. So I'm, yep. like, I'm, I'm equipped in that field as well. And I know the area, I know the town, and I know the people in their environments as well. So uh, I have to do it. <laughs> you got this, bro. Yeah, you got this, bro. Look, Look at us making plans here. Hot out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it scares me though. Right now, I'm 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 scared, like in a in a way, but it's a good scared. I'm like, oh, that 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 um that gets me going. Yeah. <sighs> okay, that's what I'm doing. You know where I'm going? I think I'm going next Thursday. Oh come on, bro! But he's already got it, bro. The date's there. <laughs> Once there's a date, it's all, it's all, it's all sold. It's all sold, guys. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at it now. I'm like, but I think next Thursday is the day I've got to go do it. Um, because it, it needs to happen. It needs to happen. We need to get out there. Yeah, come uh, on, man. Man, it's gonna be a crazy trip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what uh, I've done, bro. But bro, this is gonna be a mad story, man. I know. I'm just thinking right now. I'm like, man, yeah, legit. I just planned this out in my head right now as we're talking. So, uh, for those who are listening, uh, tune into that journey because I'll be going out to the bush and uh, yeah, go and help some men in the community. Yeah, bro, hundred percent, man. And bro, you know what, man? I'm gonna give you some more confirmations, bro, because I feel like you need it. I think you need more confirmations now, bro. A bit of certainty, bro. Um, I just believe, man. The story that you just shared right now on on the podcast, like, I believe that what you've just shared right now needs to be shared over there. You know, uh, what you just mentioned about your journey, like uh, one thing I believe in, you know, facts tells, right? You can just tell the facts and be like, yeah, you know, the drug is not good or say things like that. But the the main thing is story sells, you know, um, the, the selling point's going to be the stories. And you're not selling yourself. You're not selling, you know, um, any products or anything like you are going in there for free. But I, I guess the, the big thing is where you're, you're wanting to impact the people. Like you're actually wanting the people in the country, your own people, you know, like I believe that you can fully resonate with them because you were, you were born in the, born and raised in the, pretty much in the shelters, yeah. you know, in the country. So, um, bro, that's another confirmation I want to share to you, man. It's just like, yeah, share your story, bro. Like I'm, I'm, I'm already impacted by your story. I'm not even a country guy. I was always yeah. raised in an urban, um, you know, in, in the urban areas of uh, Sydney. So I have no clue. 
um, on, on the countryside uh, of of life. But I I can I can resonate with you based on your story, bro. Mm, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, I got to get out there and get it done, hey. So yeah, I I, I appreciate the support, bro, and uh, much appreciated. Um, yeah, man. Let's let's get it, eh? Hey. Let's, get, let's it. get it, bro. Let's get it, bro. <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. But um, anyways, man, like let's let's um, we'll start <laughs> focusing back on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, sorry, bro. I took you nah, off task, bro. Man. Nah, bro. Those <laughs> things right there, man, is what I love. Like I love mm. um when people make a change instantly. Uh, especially knowing that I've got the like the podcast going because it's uh, evidence. It's evidence to say, mm. like, if anyone's gonna be like, "Oh, hey, man, like, where did it all come from?" It's like, "Oh, bro, listen to this podcast." Like, instead yeah. of me sharing it, how about you just jump on the podcast, listen to the story, and then listen to the moment where I say, "You know what? Stuff it. I'm just gonna do it." We just spoke it into existence. Hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent, mm. man. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's oh, gonna be good, bro. Oh. It's gonna be Definitely. good, man. Um, but bro, I guess before I, I do share onto like a different, as uh, a kind of uh, set of the, the podcast, I wanted to ask, man, what, what was the fear? What would you say is the fear for you not wanting to take that step um, into going into the bush to, to do the cold runs? Um, for me, it was like when I like sit with it this morning, I'm like, am I worthy of that spot? Yeah. Like if I'm being honest, I'm like, oh, yeah. like why would they want to listen to me? Why, like, why do these guys want to, you know, why do they need my help? Um, and why me? Like, for a moment, they're like, oh, no, that's not my job. I'll pass that on to someone else. Um, I'm sure there's someone else that can do it. I'm like, it hasn't been showing up in my peripheral or in, in, within my own self for no reason. Yep. It's been here and it's been showing up for a reason because that you're the guy for it. it doesn't yeah. just, those, those ideas just don't flourish up and pop up in your head for no reason. They're there because you, your heart knows and your mind knows that that's exactly what you need to go do. Uh, it's just whether you choose and you choose to pick it up and take it and go take action on whatever it is that's showing up. And that's what I, that's what I plan to do. And I always trust my intuition, man. I, yeah, yeah. I, I have a say, I'm like, you always trust your intuition. I, I never go against my gut feeling. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I've been off lately and I've been not myself because I've gone against my gut feeling. Yeah. Because of my, my, mind and my heart my body knows what's right but i'm avoiding it yeah yeah avoiding it i'm avoiding it and it's just because there's that fear there so i better go square off with it yeah bro i'm keen man i'm keen for that man i'm, I'm keen i'm keen to see where that where that goes but um yeah man i'm say bro like i'm really enjoying this podcast like every podcast i have man i love it like i always get a takeaway um out of out of the the people but even now i get a takeaway to my vision uh into the vision as to what the Impact Podcast Show is all about, man. And I'm, funny enough, man, I always say this in every podcast and every social guest would know, like I'm always impacted. Like I'm always impacted by by the stories that every special guest shares. And bro, I'm totally impacted by yours. Um, I'm so grateful that I actually got you on. And funny enough, I only asked you like a few days ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, nah, that's all. When you asked, I was like, yeah, bro, definitely. I done. Come on. Done. I'm keen as on it. And uh, yeah, thank you, bro. And, I, and it shows in your work too, bro, like the way you, you hold yourself and the way you talk. In the introduction, and I'm listening to your introduction. I'm like, bro, my introduction sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bro, I was like, that's honey. I was like, that's so good. Um, so yeah, and it shows in your work, bro. And that's what it takes to be in this game. It's about you know the passion and the love. Is I I call it the art of the cast. Ooh, I love that the one. Art of the cast, bro. It's uh, a lot of people can see. This is the thing in in podcasting. It's more your voice. Yep. And I've seen lots of people trans out of Instagram or Facebook, et cetera, and have had big followings or big platforms and they've got into podcasting, all good and well. But when you're here in this game and it's an audio game, yeah. you only got your voice. There is only voice. Yeah. There is no appearance and there is no... And one of the things that I live by, and I've said this for so long, and I ask people this many times, I'm like, turn off all the lights. Yep. And it's, and it's dark. Who are you then? Yo. Who are you? Yo. Who are you then? Now, and for me, they're like, what person do you, like, who do you strive to be? I'm like, I strive to be the best person I can be in a dark room. Come on. That's, that's when the magic happens. Yo. When you're in a dark room and that energy and you can be a vibe, you can be that person that people want to be around and it's dark and then not anyone's judging by appearances, watches, hats, clothing. That's what counts. So for me, that's what counts. I'm like, I see people and like, I always like kind of shut my eyes in a way like with 
out shutting them and when I'm in groups and circles and I'm like yeah. this and that I'm like Yeah, come on man. I'm like, Who's here? I'm like, Who's here? I'm like, Who's that guy? Who's that girl in the room? Who's that person? Who's here? Um, because as human beings we can throw a lot of judgment, we can look around and we can perceive people and see people, but when you take away all the shit, all the things, all the fancy things and all the status, et cetera, there's just a human there. Yeah. And I want to know the most purest, best humans I can come in touch with. And that's, that's what, that's how I play life, bro. If anyone asks me how I play life, that's how I play it. In any group, in any circle I go to, I, I turn off the lights and pretend that everyone's dark and I treat everyone in that same, that same manner and look at people as their appearance or however it is. I see people for the people that they are, the human, the being, the energy that they bring, um, and the voice and the tone that they bring to the conversation and how they speak about themselves and others. So yeah, that's the, that's what I call it, bro. And that's why I say, man, podcasting it's an art. And it's the art yeah. of the past, bro. Not not everyone can do this game. No, hundred percent, bro. It is so true, man. And even, bro, even just to add on to what you're saying, like uh, one thing I always say to myself is, Josh, if you were blind, like if you were blind, and only thing that you can utilize is your ears to hear, um, like in terms of like a person, like if I'm if I'm meeting a person or if I'm on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, if you are blind and only thing they can go by is what you hear or by what other people are talking about them, like positively, um, then go by that, go by that in terms of the, like the judgment. Cause like my personality, um, in terms of the Myers Briggs, like I know doing this Myers Briggs personality test and it's like, yeah, I don't know if you know what it is, but it's like, I'm, I'm an ENFJ. So, which means that I'm a judger, right? So I yeah. go, I, yeah, I end up judging people. And even mm-hmm. that, like, um, although it's unhealthy, like it, it actually helps you at certain, at certain points. Like um, I can judge person, like, I can judge someone like just like that, not in a way of like, or oh, like you're annoying or like in a way that actually builds me up. But it's more so in the fact that, okay, like how can I keep myself safe? Like how can I save myself? Because, you know, things like, like, this is the reason why I think a lot of people, because there was actually a few people that were wanting to jump on. And I want to get like real and transparent right now because I feel like uh, I need to share this out there. Like, there's a lot of people that, that are wanting to jump on, which is cool. But my, the first thing I go by is, like, you're actually not going to help the mission. Like, and this is me going based on my intuition. And it's also mm. going based on my judgment. I'm going based on what you are doing. And it's like, I don't really feel, and this is me being the host and me being the creator. Like I can do what I want. That's the true beauty guys behind entrepreneurship and creating something by yourself and on your own. Cause it's all yours. <laughs> right? Bro. He knows, he knows the go. Ears. Music to my ears. Oh, bro. And uh, like, I've had so many people criticize me in so many areas of my life. And they're like, you need to do it this way. And I'm like, bro, you know why I did it? And I went and made my own shit it's because I can do whatever the fuck I want. The way it looks like to me. I said, you want to do what, you want to make some changes? Go do your own and make Yeah, own you go do it yourself, man. I'm like, bro, I've been saying that way too late to talk to you and listen to you talk shit. A hundred percent, bro. hundred percent, man. I already knew, bro, that you would resonate with that. Yeah, that's such a good, like, good, man. That's what you need. Like, people need to realize that, hey, like, when they're, like, even I had this conversation the other day with someone and it's like, they're like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that, but I can't. It, I don't know. Like, some people might say this. I'm like, doesn't matter what you do in life. Someone is always going to judge you and always. you down. And I, I always have a saying, I'm like, the more people you have trying to shoot you down, the more, just means you're doing more shit. <laughs> 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 just means you're doing shit. Cause I'm like, I know I legit gauge that. If I have, if, if I haven't got people trying to like throw stones at me or put me down or do, I'm like, I'm probably not doing like all. That's the yeah. honest truth. I'm probably being quiet. I'm probably not speaking into what I need to speak in. I'm probably not, doing the things that scare me the most in life or that are going to give me the most growth. So I'm like, what's anyone been saying anything shitty about me or throwing me under the bus? I'm like, no, it's because I've been quiet. I've been yeah. speaking my truth and I haven't been doing any of those things. So it's, it's just how you want to play the game, hey? Yeah. And how you want to play this game of life. The more shit you're going to do, the more people are going to hate you. And when you really try, truly come to terms with that, that's when you really start putting a stride in your step and you're like, no. Oh, Hold on to your seat, guys, because he's going to be strapped in for a long time hating me because I ain't stopping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's oh, funny man. how people dislike you too, and then they come around. They come yep. around. 
in the long run because I've been this long enough where people like dislike what I say or what, how I did something. And then years down the track, they come around. I'm like, dum, dum, here you are. I'm like, <laughs> bro, funny enough that you said that, bro. Funny, the funny enough that you said that. I was at the gym like this morning, and I was like to myself, the greatest enjoyment that I'd ever get in life is for the person who hated the mission that I was doing, the things that I was putting up on social media, the things that I was living by, and in like 10, 15 years' time, ends up making a dramatic change just from listening to all the hate, like all the hate that I was putting out there or for them feeling like, because I don't know, I feel like there are people out there that intentionally listen to things that they hate to bring something around and kind of have that conversation with people, not realizing that the more that you start filling that up, it's a more confirmation for you in the like probably say 15, 20 years time to be like, oh, sorry, man, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I don't, <laughs> People don't realize that they're actually attracted to, you know, hatred and disliking people like that because yeah. it brings them joy and fulfillment. Yep. So, yeah, that's a lot of people. That's why I learned empathy really quick because oh, I on, hate that. I'll be like, fuck you. And that yeah. I didn't know how to take it. Um, but now empathy, I'm like, oh, okay. I'll get you. It's all good. You're just going yeah. through your own shit. You haven't squared off with it yet, but which is okay. Um, but yeah, it's, um, and then it's an exciting life out there as well. <laughs> yeah and it's saddening too bro like um yeah i'm the same as you bro like i have so much empathy for people out there especially those that like and you would know this for sure bro you'll know for like i know for sure that you'll relate to this like um you know when when people start doing exactly the same as what you're doing you know when they're <laughs> yeah, you already know the guy you already know the guy it's like yeah. when they start doing exactly the same as you they start you know creating you know something that is very very similar but it's like oh i'm gonna put my different feel like bro for me man i i believe that yeah copy the model but don't copy the person bro like yeah that's man <laughs> you know that's what I mean? so true it's like you can only be you people are trying to be other people or trying yeah. to make it look like something else i'm like i've like and i've had this as well where i've tried to do something like someone else and that was like in a lot long time ago but i realized man the best thing in the world where you can be anything the best thing you can be is yourself and yeah. if you're trying to do something like someone else, it's not going to work that well. Like it may work, but it's not going to work really well. You yep, look at yep. all the best people that do what they do. They're just really, truly being their best self yeah. and working on themselves consistently. And that's what it takes hey, to do anything, to do anything. That's why I'm so excited to um, see where not only my journey goes, but your journey as well. Yeah. And uh, that's why when you reach out to me, I was like, done. I said, bro, like, done let's get it let's get this going um and i was like i want to do it straight away like yeah <laughs> and i was like no because and it's so funny that we had this conversation today around all the topics that we had because uh it was much needed more than you know it i'm looking here now like these are all the things that i needed to hear today and i feel like as far as my week has gone it's kind of just pivoted right now and it's turned the corner and a real corner um because i got some answers here that i needed and i yeah I come on bro really needed to hear. so but the listeners getting value. I'm getting value as well. So that's what it's about. I'm like, shit, man. I'm like, I had to, these are the, this is the conversation that I needed right now. Yeah, man. Mm. Nah, bro. I'm so grateful, bro. Like, um, funny enough, you t- like funny enough, you're talking about gratitude because that was a post that I put up this morning. And I ended up putting a, a, a post up and I was like, I'm happy and grateful dot, dot, dot. And then put the question box saying, what are you grateful for? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I had a few people, you know, some, someone said coffee, like they're grateful for coffee. I'm like, that's cool. But then someone also ended up mentioning, oh, I'm grateful that I've got a personal trainer in my life because if it wasn't for him, like I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I was like, wow, wow. Oh my gosh. Like, mm. it, like one thing I believe in is gratitude, eh? Like getting yeah. into a place of gratitude. It's so important, bro. It's so important to have that daily gratitude as well, not just, not just something one-off thing. It's it's that being grateful daily, just the, the accumulation of gratitude over days and years to come. It um, it puts confidence in you. Yeah, it puts that spring in you, and you need that. You need that self-confidence as well. It's so important. Um, it's not cocky to be confident in yourself. It's just you know you need to be sure of yourself. Um, and when you start being sure of who you are and what you represent and how you feel, and that's start living a real good life. Mm. Yeah, bro, I'm feeling it, bro. 
I'm feeling very, very grateful, man. <laughs> like, too, I'm getting, I'm getting boost, bro. Mm, it's nice. Yeah, man. I, like, I can't emphasize enough. Today has been a conversation that I really needed. Um, I got some answers that I really needed. And I had the conversation about going out west, that, which was something that I I actually hadn't spoken to anyone about that. Yeah, well, wow. bro, I'm so grateful, man. Like, I'm so grateful that you shared that because I already know straight away that that's something that, yeah, you're holding back. And now that you're saying, no, you know what, I'm going to take a stand. And that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I'm going to keep you accountable, bro. I'm going to be asking questions, being like, bro, how's it going? Like, share, share to me some videos or something like that, man. Well, bro, it'll be up there. I'm thinking it already. I'm like, I know who to call straight up. This, I got a phone <laughs> call to make. I had a couple of phone calls to make today. Um, Come on, and get bro. it out there and get it done. Mm. Okay, I'm doing that. <laughs> yep, let's go, let's go. <laughs> oh man. But hey bro, I guess I guess as we start to wrap up this podcast, man, I wanna hear about your um just a bit about what you're doing at the moment, um, with your podcast. Like uh just for those out of there that are listening or that are new, um, you know, they, they probably wanna know a bit about like, you know, what you do now, knowing that, you know, you're not working um in the construction business. Um so yeah, man, could you kinda of share a bit about, you know, like what you're doing at the moment? Yeah, bro, definitely. So uh, now, obviously, I have the podcast it's called "If You Don't Know, Now You Know," and I guess I'll just run down a little story about that. It's it's to get rid of the judgment on people. As today's yeah, society, it, there's a lot of judgment man on people, and uh, I like to get to know someone's story before I judge someone, and that's it. I mean, I like even if I've I've met people before, and everyone's like, oh, oh I haven't met them, I've known them, and people are like, oh no, they're a dickhead, they're fuckhead, whatever. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go meet him for myself. I've always yep. had that attitude. Yep. And I was like, I wanted to bring that to people as well. Um, like, cause not everyone has the opportunity or, or the uh, courage to go actually introduce themselves to someone and say, Hey, look, how are you doing? Mate? Tell me your story. Um, and go from there. So that's what, you know, my podcast is about, but that's what I'm doing full time now is podcasting content creating because, uh, that's what I love. I love yeah. bringing value to people's lives, um, through real stories and without the bullshit filters. Mm -hmm. Uh, without everything trying to look too neat and tidy and be like "Mm," like it has to be like an educator answer on everything that doesn't really be it just needs to be the fucking realest um truest form of your own self so then people can uh relate to it and that's what i like to bring uh so other than the podcast and i'm doing that i um obviously we've got men's medicine we've been doing our events as much as we possibly can without the whole covid uh we do our men's and women's walks that are coming up hopefully soon just depends on the whole COVID situation again. Uh, yeah. Is that, I have a few other things as well in the background. I am, I'm learning how to sell on Amazon and uh, e-commerce. Yeah, come on, so man. Stepping into that as well. Been just doing a lot of education and stuff around that. Uh, man, mainly in sales. Hey, I like sales as well. So podcasting obviously will be my thing now where I hopefully get it, or well, actually not hope. I know we'll get it to a yeah, point come where on, man. I'll, come I'll on. be able to have an editor. Um, and I, I would like to just walk in here, sit down and uh, talk and do what I love. Just yeah. chat to people and then, you know, get the whole editing side of things taken care of and uh, do that. And then in the background, go out and help people in the community, which is men's medicine, that avenue. And then also being on online sales on the e-commerce and Amazon side of the business as well. So that's what I love. Like those three things, I could, I could do those comfortably for a long time. I know that because there's a variety in there and that's why I am. Um, like there's the giving to people, um, there's the giving, the listening, and then the, obviously the receiving, yeah. which is the the Amazon selling online. So I like that balance. It's important to have that balance in your life as well. And I was always like that in construction where men's medicine was my construction business. So I was taking and building and stuff like that. Um, but then my men's medicine, I got to give as well. So it, for me, it's about creating that free flow in my lifestyle where yeah. like some people want a job and they just take, 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 take which is okay, you're working, but is there other avenues where you're being able to give back to yourself, your community, the people around you? So I like the flow. I like the flow. That's why I set my life up with, for a flow like that where I'm doing things that are constantly giving, taking, receiving, um, and listening as well, like all of those aspects. So that's why, that's how I structure my life. Like, not I don't just try to do a giving or taking thing yeah. like that because it just doesn't work. The balance of things, that's how I like it. Yeah. It's always good to have that balance, bro. And I can already see, I can already see, man, that it's it's helping you, man. Like you're you're still doing your podcast, you're still, um, you know, um, going around with the, the men's medicine, and and um, bro, you're 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 actually adding value, man. You know, you're adding value to the consumer and to to the audience out there. And 
I know for sure that there are, there are a lot of people out there that are grateful for you, bro, uh, for, for what you're doing, man. And But honestly, man, it, honestly, I always think about it. Like, if you didn't take the plunge of going hard out full time to do podcast, bro, I guess you wouldn't be seeing the impact. No way. No way. And that's what I always say that to people. I'm like, you want to do something, you just got to do it better than everyone else and go yeah. for it. And, uh, and I went like, this is something I've been really playing with lately. It's like, who's my competition? And my, the only competition I ever have is myself. Yo, yo, yo. Like, that's yo. it, bro. Hey, it's like, you 100%, just, I'm man. stiff in competition with myself and there's something I stay in the mirror. I'm like, <laughs> looking at myself, I'm like, come on, let's go. Yeah, come like, on, bro. You know, like, come, come on, man. Man. let's go. What are you going to give me today? Let's go. Um, you know, I was like, I probably sound like a madman to my neighbors, but uh, that's what I do. I'm like, let's go. I'm telling you, bro, they don't know, man. Like, they don't know um, how it is, like, in terms of you battling yourself. Like, <laughs> they don't understand, man, that you got to literally suck yourself up and tell yourself, like, grow some balls, bro. Come on, come on, man, let's go. Especially, bro, especially those ice baths. Come on, bro, mm. you'll you know the go about that one, man. Yeah. Oh, bro. That's that mental game. I'm like, oh, man. one's just over here from me. I'm like, don't mention that thing. Because <laughs> then I have to get in it. Then I have to get in it. <laughs> because sometimes it's one of those moments where I'll say, oh, yeah, oh, I'd like a nice bath. And I'm like, why did you say that? I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can we just, because rem- then I'm like, I'm one of those guys that like to action what I think. I'm like, shit, now I've got to go do it. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, now I've got to go have a nice bath. Oh, oh, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Nah, but it's good, bro. But yeah, man, bro, I just want to say, man, thank you so much for jumping on. Um, I'm so I'm so grateful to have you on here, man. Is there, is there something, because, you know, one thing I love to do by, by the end of each each podcast uh, episode that I do with the special guest is, you know, I feel like uh, this is a great opportunity for, for the special guest to share a bit of encouragement for anyone that is listening out here. So, bro, is there anything that you have on your heart right now that you can possibly share to those that are listening on? Yeah, man. Yeah. You don't, my my advice here was you'd never have to be understood. Not everyone's going to understand who you are and what you're thinking. As long as you know it's true in here, it'll always be right. Don't ever make things look away because someone else says something like their opinion on what you're doing or how you're saying it. Uh, Don't ever like try craft what you do and how you do to suit what they say because that won't right and that won't feel right. And I'm like, man, the, I always emphasize this. It's like own who you are, but know who you are. You yeah. cannot own who you are if you don't know who you are. And when you truly start to own who you are, that's, you need to know who you are. Like all your goods, and this is where I go talking to self-love and express the fullest expression of self-love. Uh, it's not all the good things about you. The fullest expression of self-love to me is not only the good, but the bad, the dark and yeah. the light. They do not exist without each other and loving all the things that you may not like about yourself, the past, the good things, you know, maybe your body, you may have shame around your body, maybe the, like things that you, you say or the way you talk, love all of those, love all the good things as well and then you mangle them together because that's you. Yeah. If you are saying, oh, I love like, I love being positive, I'm like, you're only truly loving half of you mm. because there's this other half which is the dark side of you Love both. That's true love. Love both. And that's why I say, own who you are. Know who you are, but own who you are. That's, that's hectic, life. bro. That's hectic, man. <laughs> 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 that, that's a hectic, that's hectic saying, bro. I'm going to have that in my head, bro. Um, every morning now. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> that's hectic, bro. I, know who you are, but own who you are. Own who you are, but know who you are. Uh, I said every, I sat back in front of it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. But yeah, man, yeah. I'll say, bro, thank you so much for jumping on. Mm. Uh, I know that the people out there that, that, are, um, that are listening and watching and all watching um, are getting value from you, bro. So uh, from here, man, uh, what's the best way that, like, if anyone wants to connect with you or know more about you, bro, what's the best way that they connect with you? Yeah, definitely, brother. Cheers. It's on Instagram. Um, I'm always hanging on Instagram. I have Facebook. I don't really hang out on there at all. Uh, but my Instagram handle is at Mr. MR underscore Hecka, H-E-K-A. And either there or on the men's medicine. It's just simply men's medicine. Um, you can find me on either one of those pages or at, if you don't know, now you know. Um, that's super easy to find as well. Just type in if you don't know, now you know. 
on at my podcast channel and yeah that's usually where i hang out on those three pages um and yeah shoot us a message and i'll get back to you yeah sweet sweet so for those that are watching this on youtube um, it'll be down in the links down below and for those that are listening to this on spotify and or apple podcast i uh, just jump into our instagram page um, he'll be featured on our following list and so you guys can just check out there quickly and um his links will be there for you so um that is yeah that's probably the best way that you guys can get towards that but other than that guys i want to say thank you all for tuning in thank you brother luke thank you so much for tuning on bro and bro i can't wait to hear more about the the cold run bro i'm keen oh thank you brother appreciate it and thanks for having me on today all right all good bro no worries man so guys thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one